Buddy, let's go. Come on, move it. New orders. Like the odds? Go for it. You should have. Oh, shucks. <laughs> yeah, the guy we got him off hardly struggled at all. Yeah, they're just my size. Too. They're fresh from the morning this morning. Fish, <laughs> Boys and girls, contrary to popular belief, we're not here to subsidize the donut house. Let's go back to work, shall we? Old bastard, yeah, he has no heart. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. I think. <laughs> Need 
that donut. Retirement, Bert. Live a little. No dietary fiber in a donut at all. Two vests? Well, what are you worried about, taping? Damn right, two vests. You know what they got now? Magnesium tip bullets. Armor piercing bullets, except they don't just penetrate. They penetrate and they explode. Well, what's the difference? If it happens, it happens. No, not this week, pal. Tip. Remember Phil Deegan? Who? Homicide over in Roxbury. Short time, same as you. Five days left on the force. Figures you'll stay out of the way. Furnish in his house explodes. Knocks him clean into his neighbor's garage. Had to peel him off a car. Yeah. I don't have a garage, pal. You don't know anything about hot tubs. That's why I'm going into business with Lewis. Lewis, that guy in there? Yeah. It's like he robbed the grocery stores. Not anymore. Not anymore? I can't believe you're even considering this. <laughs> Did you see the women in there? They were so buoyant. We're talking about some life savings, man. You gotta plan this kind of thing. Not again. Hey, just listen to me for once. The simple rules of finance that can make a very big difference. You got $11,400, right? Right. All right, you put that in six month CDs. Right. That's compounding at about nine and a quarter percent annually, only it's more like 14 percent because it's shielded. Now, you amortize that over 32 years, you got about $500,000. I know, Bert, but what am I going to do with a half a million bucks when I'm 92 years old? How about you retire? Forget it. I'm going into the hot tub business with Lewis. Right. You should never listen to me, do you? Because you never talk to me, you lecture me. I don't lecture you. How many times did I tell you not to smoke in the car? There you go again, you're lecturing me. Why do they always give us these things that never look like the real guy? Sometimes they do. Never. Dark hair, broad nose, always the same face. They wouldn't do it if it didn't work, Bert. You want to name me one time when somebody nailed a suspect from one of these composites? Yeah, that guy over there, he looks about as much like this sketch as... Tiger? They're here. Shit! 
Ernie, what are you doing? Nobody shoots at me and gets away with it! It's rude! Ah! He says, Ernie! Simpson and Bills refused to chase a dangerous felon yesterday. Can anyone tell me why they decided to sit down on a roof while the rest of the precinct chased him through the streets of downtown Seattle? <coughs> Could it be because Detective Simpson only has six more days to serve on the force? Eight. Oh, I'm sorry, Bert. You're really in for the long haul, aren't you? You're going for that gold watch, huh? We chased the guy up to the roof. Where you managed single-handedly to subdue your partner until backup units could arrive. I'm sure we'll all sleep a lot better knowing that. <coughs> <coughs> nice job, fella. Detective Simpson did manage to uh, retrieve a vital piece of evidence. Yeah, with his head. This is part of a shipment of experimental weapons that was hijacked last Tuesday. The feds believe it was a gang last known to be operating out of Chicago, run by this guy, Carl Stark. <coughs> And any short-time goof-off that doesn't bust his ass to bring this guy in is going to be as popular around this precinct as a reggae band at a Ku Klux Klan rally. <laughs> <clears throat> is that clear, Bertie? Yeah. You think that just because I wear this uniform, I still have having feelings? God's sakes, don't do this to us, Elizabeth. You're not doing anything. It's you. You just don't understand. What you say? But I don't love you. But I don't need you. I'm saying that I'm not just a cop, David. I'm a woman, too. I thought this was going to happen. David. Don't worry about a bird. 30 years in the department. Twinkie? 30 years. You taxed my whole career. Because exercise of good judgment. Eight days before I retire. Look, nobody's calling you a coward. Hey, chicken shit. Nice caller, boys. Screw you, Dan. You know, if you guys want to smooch, you don't have to go up to the roof. You can do it uh, right in here. I said screw you. Just humor, Marnie. You know, I'm glad you let him go, because it's going to look great on my record when I get up. Dan, I didn't know you'd cut a record. Dan Miller on the asshole label. It's funny, Dills. That's very funny. Look, I think uh, your buddy forgot this. Don't hurt yourself, old timer. <laughs> I don't get him. 
Bert, you got eight days left on the force, and now you want to buy life insurance? Getting shot is not the only way to buy the farm, pal. You know that more men suffer massive coronaries in their 50s than any other time in their lives? Isn't that something? I'm not kidding. Liver dysfunction, renal disorder, degenerative nerve stuff. All that stuff happens when you're in your 50s. Bert, if you stop worrying about your insides so much... I'm not worried about my insides. I'm worried about Dougie. If something happens to me, how does he go to college? How old is he again? Ten. And a half. Shouldn't you be planning ahead? Have a seat, please, Mr. Spivak. You guys here for the drug test? <laughs> I wish. Life insurance. Oh, I'm a little nervous. My company sprang this on me at the last minute. Mm -hmm. Do you think if I smoked a joint a couple of days ago, it might show up on this thing? No, Bert, what do you think? Definitely. How do you know? <clears throat> of course, I really didn't smoke a joint a couple of days ago. OK, Mr. Simpson, Mr. Spivak, you can come in now. Jeez, I done it. Thanks, Mr. Simpson. You can get Souvenir. You just put it up on the shelf, look at it. Hmm. <laughs> How's your mom? She's okay. Did you tell her I was coming over? Yeah. You're not gonna do it, Bert. He's a ten-year-old boy, and you're not gonna give him an ulcer. One little pressure. Oh, the penance, the sweatshirts. I'm telling you, if that kid doesn't get into Harvard, he's gonna kill himself. You get in. It isn't fair, Bert. You can't map out somebody's life 20 years in advance. Well, there's nothing wrong with getting a little head start. You're gonna give him your twitch. What twitch? That twitch. Huh? Bert. You know what he asked me the other night? What? He asked me if they were still gonna have P.E. when he gets to Harvard. <laughs> What'd you tell him? I told him not to worry about Harvard yet. Oh, honey, Jesus. I can't do it, Bert. You can't live his life for him. What's that supposed to mean? It means that some things are out of your control. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Well, that's what it means. No, no, why don't you say what you really mean? That I'm uh, uptight and uh, controlling and... No, that's not what I said. Look, honey, I planned my whole life so that kid could go to college. Well, great. Can he please finish grammar school first? I'm only doing it because I love him. I know you do, Bert. But that's not loving him. Thank you. 
Stay here. Hmm. Mr. Scalazy? Let's see the merchandise. Oh, man, look at this shit. The Barrett, Model 82A1, 50 caliber, Startron scope. 11 round capacity, staggered box magazine. Heavy. What about the shells? Like I told you, 50 caliber, magnesium tipped. The price is not negotiable. Everything's negotiable. A scratch. No bullets worth 20 bucks a pop. You ever been shot at with one of these? He's my wife's cousin. Yeah. So you want to do some business or what? Vito, get up. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. See the inflammation around the cell wall? The discoloration? Couldn't be anything else. Really? No question. Look how the spores invade the cell lining right there. I may have seen three of these in my life. Poor guy. He was going to retire. It's a shame. You eat yet? Hello? Hey, Doc. How you doing? When now? Uh, I don't understand. I mean, where? At, at your office? Well, yeah, I, I, I get there about two. Okay. Yeah, I'll see you then. Okay. This is Dr. Goldman. He's a hematologist. Hi. How are you? I, I asked him to come in here today because it appears you have a rather rare blood disorder. Disorder? Oh, you, mean, you mean like a, like a, 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 a disorder? I'm going to let Dr. Goldman explain it to you since he's an expert in the field and can probably make it a lot clearer than I can. I thought you were going to explain it to him. You know the disease. Yeah. Pretty sure patient. <laughs> What's going on? Bert, you have a disease known as autotoxia hematosa. Uh, the common name is Wexler's curtain. It's a progressive blood disorder in which the lymphatic system actually attacks the red blood cells, mistaking them for an invading virus. It's very rare. Yeah. As the disease progresses, the lining of the cells become weakened to a point where they can no longer oxygenate the body. This, of course, includes the brain. Well, of course. As the deprivation becomes more pronounced, 
the tissue itself begins to deteriorate, literally suffocating from the lack of oxygen. The entire process takes about uh, two and a half weeks. I don't understand. Well, we're afraid it's terminal. Terminal? Terminal? I often don't tell patients about situations like this because there's nothing they can do. But in your case, the progression is so rapid, I thought you might need a chance to get your affairs in order. What you're, what you're saying is I'm, I'm dying. I'm, I'm really dying. I'm afraid so. The later stages are usually marked by a neurological breakdown. There's some medication that can temper this, but... Well, what about chemotherapy? Unfortunately, Bert, this is not cancer. Oh. Your body has actually turned on itself. I hate to have to tell you this, Bert. It's always hard for a doctor to know whether or not you should be candid with someone in your position. I just felt that telling you was the right thing to do under the circumstances. No, that's... You did the right thing. If there's anything else we can do, please let us know. In the meantime, take two of these as soon as the dizziness starts. I have been offered a place at Harvard. Oh. Mom? I don't know how to tell you this, honey. What is it, Mom? Well, 10 years ago when your father died, the insurance company only left us $22,000. We've been living off of that money for the last 10 years. There isn't any money left, Dougie. You won't be able to go to Harvard. There's always community college. college. Oh.
Well, I want to come in. Yeah. Bert, what's going on? Yeah, just, uh, I don't want you to worry. Well, what would I worry about? The future. Bert, you're the one that always worries about the future. Remember when Dougie made this for us? Honey, Dougie didn't make that for us. He didn't? Uh-uh. Bert, what's going on? Nothing. Nothing. You're gonna... You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be okay. What are you talking about? Dougie. Dougie's gonna be fine. He's gonna be great. Would you like to sit down? No, I don't... I don't have time. I mean, I don't mean it the way it sounds. It's just... Honey, I... I just want you to know that I've, I've taken care of everything. Mm -hmm. I, I know you know that, but I've, I've still taken care of it. I mean, it's just as taken care of as it always was. Bert. I've got to go now. I mean, I don't have to go, but... Bert, talk to me. What is the matter? Nothing. Nothing. Bert. Everything's fine. I can handle it. Policy's in effect as long as you're still on the force. Well, how much, uh, how much is it worth? Well, at this point, uh, $350,000. $350,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much. The only thing is, what? it's line of duty coverage. I don't understand. Well, it means you gotta get, you know. Killed? They only pay out for line of duty. You can't collect on anything else. Okay, well, thanks. I want double duty. What? I want double duty. I don't get it. Is this some kind of a joke? I owe it to the department. Look, Bert, if this has anything to do with what I said in the squad room... You're two cars short in the flats. I'll take one of those. Are you all right? What do you mean? You seem a little tense. Tense? Look. I know how hard this last week is. I've seen a lot of guys go through this. Why don't I put you here on a desk? No, damn it! I want double duty. Now you gotta give it to me. Fine, Bert, you've got it. Good. Good. Cops, Ernie. Bert, it's like West Bay Route down there, and you decide it's up for 14 hours. Let me drive. Look, if you're trying to prove something about yesterday, it's not about yesterday, it's about tomorrow. It's probably that male menopause, Bert. Why can't you just lose your hair and date unsuitable women like the rest of us? Radio working. What? The radio is working. Why wouldn't the radio be working? Toughest neighborhood in Seattle, and we haven't had a call yet. Bert, what is the matter with you? I think something's the matter with me. Where's your vest? I'm not wearing a vest. You're not wearing your vest? No, I'm not wearing a vest. Why don't you issue a press release about it? To Charlie 9, to Charlie 9, domestic violence in progress, 1, 2, 3, 5, can't declare. Proceed from 3. That's what I like it. Police! 
No, I don't believe this. She tried to kill me. What? Uh, just calm down, ma'am. What? Unbelievable. Uh, sir, can you tell me what happened, please? She hit me with an iron. Look. He says she hit him with an iron. Who's Myron? I don't believe this. An iron, an iron. He says he hit him with an iron. I did. He's a skunk. Why is he a skunk? Because he said he was leaving. She said that you said that you were leaving? No. I said I was eating. Mm. <laughs> Just open the book. Look at this, and you can be saved even as I was saved, because I was just like anybody else here. Now, you say, no, no, that doesn't apply to me. But I'm telling you right now, this does apply to you, because this is your life. This is your truth. He took me down as low as a man. Get you some yogurts. Peach or blueberry? Bert, do you believe in life after death? Look, a peach or blueberry is too tough a question. Do you, uh, do you believe in heaven? Heaven? Mm hmm. Gee, yeah. uh, I don't know, Bert. Remember something my dad talked about, though, after his first heart attack? Mm hmm. Remember those stories about people who've almost died? And they talk about seeing this tunnel of white light, which they kind of float up into. And at the end of it, there's this beautiful garden with all the people that they've ever known just waiting for them. Yeah. Well, my dad was out for a couple of minutes. And when they got him back, he talked about it. What do you see? Nothing. Nothing? No tunnel, no floating, no white light. Just him lying there on the bed one minute. Next. Squad. Give me one of those. Bravo unit, Bravo unit. Silver Pontiac need assist. High speed southbound on East Seattle Parkway. Currently in pursuit. Respond code three. That's it. What's it? This is it. Bird, we're nowhere near the East Seattle Parkway. Oh, get out of the car. What are you talking about? Check the uh, right rear tire. It's low. It doesn't feel low. It's low. Get out! Oh, God.
crazy! Mother! Can't you idiots do anything right? <laughs> for risking your life in service to this department, for unmatched bravery beyond the call of duty, the Seattle Police Department's proud to present you with this Medal of Valor, along with the accompanying citation. We're just glad you're still around to get it. letters, David. I wrote them. You're not pregnant? No, I'm not pregnant. I'm your twin sister, Joan. She died in the orphan. No, the fire I don't get it. Me. Shh. I managed to escape, but I lost my memory. I'm your partner, Bert. I want to know. I told you there's nothing to matter. Okay? Yeah, right. You kick me out of the car, you drive off the side of a building. David? It's an impulse. I can't take any more. Please put the gun down. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bertie. What do you want? I just want to congratulate your partner. Guess who you squashed? Lutz, Jonas B., and his brother Michael. So, two right hand men to one Carl Stark, gun smuggler supreme, and killer in cold blood of any cops across his path. <laughs> it's the big time, Bert. You bagged a couple of stars. I don't want to tell you how to live your life, but I'd get a bulletproof house if I were you. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can't easily go, huh?
Can I help you? Oh, um, yeah. I, I um, uh, I'd like to, to buy a, um, uh, a housing. Excuse me? We call them housings. Ah. Uh, well, yeah. Well, what sort of price range are you looking at? Well, I, I, uh, I really don't know. Is there, is there a big difference? Or... Oh, sure. You've got everything from 1800 right up to 60000 $60,000. It's titanium alloy. See, it's all a question of durability. Most people think that they just put you in the ground and then the next thing they're dust. But there's lots of intermediate stages. I mean, you want something that's really going to hold up when the body starts to rot. Was it a loved one? Well, uh... Yeah, I guess, yeah. A friend? Sort of, yeah. Some people think it's silly to match the housing with the individual, but let's face it, they're going to be in there for an awfully long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, no, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, he was, uh, he was uh, reasonable. Reasonable? Yeah, he was. Uh, and he was young. Uh, 50, you know, just turned 50. Oh, that's very sad. Yeah, that is, that is sad. Did I tell you it was a cop? Did I tell you that already? No. Yeah. 30 years on the force, and, uh, about five days from his pension, and now... It isn't fair sometimes, huh? <laughs> he once wanted this convertible, little red Mustang. He decided he wanted to save. Put something away for the future. Sure. Well, is that so wrong? It's so wrong to want to put something away, something to rely on? No. Not that you can rely on anything these days. Nothing makes any sense. <laughs> I mean, does it make any sense to die at 50? Is that sensible? I don't know. I guess you just got to live for today. Yeah, you know, let the future take care of itself. Let the future take... Live for today and let the future take care of itself. How about something in a nice cedar? Bert! Listen, um... I'm sorry. About what? Everything. That's a lot. I was sorry about the other day. Sorry about the past five years. Huh? Sorry about this toaster. The toaster? The toaster. Yeah, this toaster. Remember? You wanted one with the top brown. I made you buy this one because it has a better warranty. Huh. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I accept your apology. Sorry about those uh, plastic slip covers, too. I, uh, I'm really sorry I made you tip these damn coupons. Bert, what is the matter? Nothing. Nothing. Everything, uh, everything's fine. I can tell. It is, really. Everything's wonderful. I, uh, I love you. Jesus, Bert. Do. Not in the way I ever loved you before. I love you. I mean you. I don't love us. I don't love the house, the joint tax return. Stop it, Bert. I love the way you snort when you laugh. <sighs> you hate the way I snort. Exactly. That's the point. Look, I need you to know this, Carolyn. I have to have you know this right now. You always told me not to snort when we went out. I know, and I hate myself for that. Is this a midlife crisis? Yes. The sort of. Want some Hawaiian punch? Do you remember when we went to your sister's house and you 
came into the bathroom with me and you wanted to... Right. And the party was going on outside and you were a little drunk and you were wearing the blue dress. That's enough. Well, I wanted to, too. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I just thought with all those people, I, I thought they'd hear us and I... I got chicken. Bert, I think you better go. No. No, I, I'm not going to leave. Do you remember when you used to sing to Dougie when he was a baby? I used to stand out in the hall and just watch you. And sometimes I would, I would start crying. And when Dougie was being born, I made the nurse let me stand in the doorway so I could hear that you were all right. And when you were taking those drawing classes and you'd come home and throw away some of your pictures, I picked all those pictures out of the garbage and put them in a drawer. That's the way I've always felt about you. Just haven't been able to say it. Jesus, Bert. Notice how perfect the tulip is. What? The petals. And they open up like tiny little bells. Bert, will you please tell me what the hell is going on? Uh, I just think it's wonderful, that's all. It's an incredible thing. My partner's turning into Oscar Wilde. All units, all units, 111 in progress. Repeat, 111 in progress, 1800 Marshall Avenue. Proceed, code 3. Could make it. What's going on? Yeah, what's going on? Freaking Looney Tunes got himself wired to eight sticks of dynamite. Wants to talk to the President of the United States or his ex wife. Ex wife? Yeah. Every time we get close, he says, Love is dead in the world. I'm ready, Captain. <laughs> Shut up, Dills. <laughs> All right, people, let's get ready. Where's Bert? Excuse me. Oh, no. The hell? Simpson! Simpson! 
is my spot, Simpson. Simpson, you listen to me. Simpson. dead in the world. I know what you mean. You do? Yeah. I, I think I just got lost or something. I could just froze along the way. about your wife. Yolanda? Yolanda. I know how much pain you must be in. So you're gonna blow yourself up? Because you think she doesn't love you anymore? I, I think maybe she still loves you. You do? Yes, I do. When, um, when's the last time you told her you love her? A long time ago, huh? Just slowly stop talking to each other. And one day you can't even remember why you fell in love with each other in the first place, right? Well, obviously, you can remember that now or you wouldn't be going through all this business. yourself up if you want. You're going to be missing a lot. Do you, do you have any kids? Mickey and Mikey. Mickey and Mikey. How, how old are they? Three and a half and five. Well, if you're gone, who's going to see they graduate high school? How are you going to find out whether they, they found a nice girl? Huh? Whether... Mikey's stutter ever cleared up. Mikey doesn't stutter. No, I, I understand that, but let's, let's just say that you did. You know, there's so much, there's so many, there's so many little things that we don't even notice until they're gone. And Mickey, can Mickey ride a bike? Well, don't you want to teach him how to ride a bike? Or see him get his braces? Or finally touch the top of that door jam? How did you know about the door jam? You may think you know him, but I bet you don't even know his teacher is. Or the names of the monsters in his room. And why he buried his shoes at time. Why he made you call him Peter for a whole month. You know, you just take things like that for granted. One day, there's a stranger standing at the door and saying, can I borrow the car keys, Dad? You don't know how it got that way. You don't even know what you're doing in there. It's gone, then. Once it's gone,
Thank you. Okay, pal. All right, come with us. Hell of a job, Bert. Completely insane, man, but a hell of a job. Really? First rate. <laughs> All right. There's one thing, Bert. Uh, where's the bomb? The bomb? Yeah. And in recognition of an act of outstanding heroism, the Seattle Police Department awards you the Silver Cross. speech. I'm in a hurry. Why? Where are you going? I haven't got time, Ernie. Bert, where are you going? You're not going anywhere, Simpson. Jesus, Miller, not now, okay? Who the hell do you think you are? He's my partner, oh, shit sorry. for hold brains. It, hold it, hold it, hold it. Look, look, look. I'm, I'm sorry I took your bust, all right? If I could, I'd put it on your record. It really doesn't matter to me, pal. That's nowhere near good enough. Well, it's gonna have to be good enough for now, because I'm in a big, big hurry. Well, I don't give a shit, because we're having it out right now. <laughs> Miller, look, I, uh, I'm not gonna swing at you. Because you're a wuss, Simpson. Just like I always thought you were. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe you're right. On the other hand... Could be wrong. I love you, Bert Simpson. Dougie! Dougie! Hey, boy. How you doing? I'm okay. Huh? I'm fine. Who are you talking to up here? Give me a... Uh, just my buddies. Ah, uh, I got you right where I want you. Uh, I can't breathe. Uh, I got you now. Give up. You give. Uncle, uncle. Uh, uncle. <laughs> are you really sure? Never been so sure of anything in my life. Jesus. You're all set, Mr. Simpson. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. This is terrific. So you all set, Mr. Simpson? You bet. Right. You like it? Hey! I love it. <laughs> This you like it? Yeah. Place. We came here with Miss Graham. We're doing a project on the rainforest. Are you? Yeah. Wow, look at this guy. Oh my God. I like him. He's a bird eating spider. Bird eating? Except he doesn't really eat birds. No? He eats things like mice and bugs, but he can kill birds if he has to. Huh. You know, if they get too close to his hole where he lives. Yeah. It's because it's so hot. They live in holes. Mm. It's cooler under the ground. It's safer while they're sleeping. You must know a lot about bugs, huh? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. But they're not my favorite. Baseball's still my favorite. Then dinosaurs, and then bugs. Hey, Dad, you gotta see this. Isn't he cool? Oh, yeah. Wow. Scary, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
spider. At eleven holes. Right. Dad? Can we do it again next week? We'll see. Remember when we first moved in, Bert? How we'd planned this porch would be? Oh, whitewashed decks and oh. that old summer chair that Ernie's sister gave us hanging over there. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened to that chair? Mm, it's still in the garage, I think. Huh. Mm. Oh, Bert, I feel so lucky. I really thought it was all over for us. I haven't even given up hoping, but somehow you made it all happen for us again, Bert. No, I didn't, honey. Yes, you did. And suddenly I feel like we have a future again. I love you, Bert Simpson. I love you too. I says to him, he says, okay, well, so what are tornadoes for? And then the, and then the priest, the priest, he says, well, they're God's answer to trailer parks. <laughs> what? Never mind. Just heard about Tucker. No. Got blown away this afternoon. Yeah, he pulls this guy over for making an illegal right. He asked him for his license, oh. and blam, he takes two rounds in the chest. They ID the guy? Yeah, Carl Stark, boss of those two guys that you put in the hospital. Man, that guy is an evil son of a bitch. Stark. Shit, I'm getting hungry. Look we'll at something to eat. What? When's the last time I bought you dinner? Couple weeks ago? No, 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 that's not right. You you got the pizzas on Monday. Exactly. What are your mind? And a jacket is you, pal. Thanks. I just want to buy you a little dinner, that's all. Dinner's a pizza bird or a cheeseburger, not a lobster thermidor. Ernie, you were best man at my wedding, your godfather to my son. We've been partners for 10 years. Now, what kind of a world would it be if I couldn't just once spend more than three lousy dollars buying you dinner? Nothing's worth 90 bucks a plate. You are, pal. Ball wines. Yeah, please. Back. Let me have a bottle of your best champagne, OK? Bird. Ernie, I have just found out something that's so important. I can't believe it took me this long to find out. What? You can't spend your whole life planning what'll make you happy tomorrow, or you'll never be happy today. You got to do it now. And that includes your, uh, your hot cups. I was wrong about it, Louis. It's all right. It's a good deal. Great idea. Thank you. You got to go for it, Ernie. You got to enjoy it.
Oh, almost forgot. These are for you. One of these. Keys to my Mustang. You bought a Mustang. A little red convertible. I want you to have it. That's it, buddy. You're seeing a doctor. You're completely out of your fucking mind. Ernie, have you ever driven a convertible? Do you know how it feels when the top's down, sun's out, wind's going through your hair? Do you know how alive it makes you feel? I want you to have that feeling. I want you to feel alive. Finally, he takes me out for a $400 meal, kisses me, and gives me these, the keys to his new convertible. What the hell's wrong with him? And today is his last day on the force? Mm-hmm. I really don't think you need to worry very much. He said he loved me. Many officers on the point of retirement experience a surge of contradictory feelings. Some relate to an imminent loss of power, others to a, a fear of making it alone outside the close camaraderie of the force. No, you don't understand. Bert's not like this, not at all. This is like driving around with a completely different guy. Well, I suppose it's just possible that he could be suffering from some form of manic depression. Well, how can we find out? Well, it's actually a chemical imbalance. It would show up on a simple blood test. Morning. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Morning. Morning. Have a little break. Gee, thanks a lot. Dr. Eisenhower. Yeah. Dr. Eisenhower. Boys. Jesus, it's him. Just get the hell out of here. Oh. Now, does that mean you're not going to tell me where Stark is? <laughs> well, um, look, I'll tell you what. I'm going to leave you my number. Well, right here. If you change your mind, you just give me a, a call. Can you read that? Well, you can't see from there, can you? Can you read this? Yeah, I can read that. Excellent. Go ahead. What? What's my number? Screw you. You weren't really serious about calling me, were you? I'll tell you where Stark is. Good boy. Can you tell me what room Dr. Drexler is in, please? Drexler? Yes, it's very important. One moment. Dr. Drexler's on the second floor, room 207. 207, thanks. I'm afraid it's completely out of the question. All patients' records are strictly confidential. But I have to see them. Not without Mr. Simpson's written authorization. You don't understand. I'm a cop. So, show me your warrant. Screw this. This is outrageous. He's my partner. Well, your partner is dying. What? I said he's dying. Tosa. 
Wexler's curtain. That's why I didn't report the marijuana trace. Marijuana? That's what I said. You must have known there was something wrong when he began to go blind. Blind? You gotta find him. There's two guys in traction in there claiming he busted in and beat on him till he told him where Stark was. Could have blown the whole thing. Shit. Hey, Ed. Uh, Kevin wants to see help. I'll take over here. Come on, get going. Where the hell is my partner? No! It's great. We got to do this more often. I deducted for the damages on the doors. Uh... Crazy son of a bitch. I like that. You're still gonna blow me away, though, aren't you? I'm gonna kill you.
you missed me again, you idiot! So listen up. Either you come up here and kill me, or I'm gonna climb down there and pull us both up. You got it? <laughs> okay, pal. That's it. Like 
beloved. We who gather here come from many different stages in our journey through life, with differing ways of looking at life and death. We gather here to mourn a man, a friend to those who knew and loved him, a man who served this city well, a man who wore his uniform with pride. Couldn't he hurry it up a little? One thing we have in common. Show a little respect. At some point, our lives were touched by him whom we mourn here. <coughs> and our lives touched him. His sudden departure from among us has cut across all our lives. In this Dad? time of loss, may we find comfort who is this guy? in these ancient words. He drove buses. For everything there is a season. Also gave me back my life. The time for every matter under heaven. Carolyn? Captain. Well, you made it. Just about, anyway. <laughs> I was hanging out of the chopper. <laughs> Shut up, Dills. <laughs> Precinct's not going to be the same without you. Well, oh, I, I almost forgot. The uh, helicopter pilot sent that over. Thought you might like to see it. <laughs> yeah, not my best angle, is it? Oh, look, your flies open. Yeah, you can keep this. I'll sign it for you later. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot, Captain. Listen, yeah, thanks for coming out here. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Here we go, honey. You ready? You got the keys, Ernie? Yeah, I'm ready. I got the keys. It's my car. What do you mean it's your car? Well, he gave it to me. You gave it to him? When I thought it was dying. <laughs> well, that's not my fault, pal. Mm -hmm. yourself. <laughs> so, can I borrow the car? Okay, but it's 10 cents a mile. Figures. Great. Back seat. That's my car. That's a heavy wasp. Keys, keys. You okay, honey? Oh, yeah, piece of cake. So, where do you want to go? <laughs> I want to go to a park. I kind of like to go home. 